Welcome back my dear students. Let us continue further with transcription. Transcription in prokaryotes. What is happening? So what are the general concepts regarding this? Remember there are three phases. Initiation, elongation and termination. Now the prokaryotic RNA polymerase can bind to the DNA template directly in the transcription process. That is important as far as prokaryotes are concerned. This is I have emphasized to uh, differentiate between eukaryotic eukaryotic uh, transcription. Now the eukaryotic RNA polymerase requires cofactors to bind to the DNA template to, uh, together in the transcription process. So let us look at an overview of the transcription process. Now the initiation phase. First the RNA polymerase recognizes the promoter and starts the transcription. The RNA polymerase is going to recognize the promoter. It may be minus 30 phase sequence where it is just recognizing at minus 10 it is going to bind. Remember the cat box and the tata box and both of these will bind and now the initiation is going to take place. In the elongation phase, RNA strand is continuously growing and in the termination phase, the RNA polymerase stops synthesis and the nascent RNA is separated from the DNA and separated from the DNA template. So let us look at the first step, initiation, how it happens. As I said, the RNA polymerase recognizes the TTGACA region and slides to the Tata region, TA, TA, T region and then opens the DNA duplex. What is happening here is yes. it recognizes and now this double stranded DNA is going to be opened. The helix is going to be opened. So this slides to the TATAD region, opens the DNA duplex. Now the unwound region is about 17 plus or minus 1 base pair. So there are 17 plus or minus 1 base pair. This has formed, this is unwound. This DNA has unwound. So then what happens? Then next what will happen in the initiation? Now this unwinding of DNA results in super coils. Whenever there is unwinding, there is super coils. And these super coils are removed by DNA topomerases 1 and 2. I have already told to you the differences between DNA topomerase 1 and DNA topomerase 2. One brings about single strand nick, whereas uh, uh, DNA topomerase 2 cuts both the strands removes the super coils and joins them. Now the first nucleotide on the RNA transcript is usually a purine triphosphate, GTP most of the time, then ATP, MCQ point of view. Now what will ha what else is happening? happening? No primer is needed for RNA synthesis. The RNA polymerase begins to synthesize the transcript and usually after the addition of a few bases, the sigma subunit is released. So you have the RNA polymerase. This whole RNA polymerase starts synthesizing a new transcript and the transcript is, transcript is, it keeps on synthesizing, okay. It keeps on synthesizing a new transcript. This transcript and this enzyme also keeps on moving like this. So as it is moving, that is during the elongation phase, so it keeps, it starts synthesizing. Now once a few base pairs have been added, it is complementary to the, uh, to the DNA template and the sigma subunit is released. Now the core enzyme moves along the DNA template and it keeps on moving like this and this will lead to the final elongation phase. So in the elongation phase what is happening? The sigma subunit has caused a conformational change in the core enzyme. The core enzyme starts sliding on the DNA template towards the 3' prime end. So towards the 3' prime end it is going to go like this. Synthesis is occurring from 5' prime to 3' prime. Always it is uh, as it is going it is core enzyme is sliding forward. Now the free NTPs are added sequentially to the 3' prime hydroxyl group of the nascent RNA strand. Always and always remember it is at the 3' prime end that something is going to be formed. We cannot add anything at the 5' prime end because phosphate is there. At the 3' prime end hydroxyl group is there. So, we, so the enzymes can keep on adding more and more nucleoside, uh, nucleotide triphosphates etc. can be added at the 3' prime end. So the free NTPs are added sequentially. The sequence is determined by the template. So before elongation phase, 
this whole thing over here that is formed is called as the transcription bubble it is looks like a bubble it is a transcription bubble this transcription bubble contains what it contains rna polymerase it contains a D, dna segment of approximately 40 nucleotide uh, length and the nascent rna this and this have formed the complex nascent rna dna rna polymerase together they form a complex called as transcription bubble and this bubble is going to keep on moving till the end it reaches the end of the gene till the where it is supposed to reach now this the three prime segment of the th nascent rna hybridizes with the dna template and slowly as it is moving like this so i will just show you the next step what will happen the same dna it will have finished its transcription in this region maybe the transcription bubble is going forward uh, and it is going in this direction it is moving the rna polymerase is keeping on moving and it has gone to some extent now in this extent what will happen the nascent rna is still hybridized with the dna but one new rna is coming out this rna is coming out one which has finished transcription as per the template and this is coming out so if you look at it the, as i said always new things are added at the 3 prime end and this will be the 5 prime end the 5 prime end will slowly keep on moving this will be the 5 prime end and this will be the 3 prime end and it will slowly come out so like this the transcription bubble is going to move along the dna so the 5 prime end extends out of the transcription bubble as the synthesis is processing now what is the importance of this step where RNA polymerase is moving like this. Now there is a, a drug known as dactinomycin, also called as actinomycin D. This binds to the DNA template and interferes with the movement of RNA polymerase along the DNA. So if dactinomycin is there, it will come and bind here. It prevents this RNA polymerase from moving. And this has been used in cancer chemotherapy so main function is it inhibits the movement of rna polymerase now it is moving 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 till where when to end how to know where to stop so this comes as brings us to the termination factor so the rna polymerase stops moving on the dna template the rna transcript falls off from the transcription complex so in the next thing I'll just remove this clinical thing that I told about actinomycin D. So in the next step, what is happening? It has reached towards the end. Now the thing is, this DNA is there. The RNA polymerase also has to be released, and plus a new DNA, the RNA that is formed has to be released from the DNA. It has to come out of the DNA. So how does this happen? How is this possible? So there is a, a different uh, uh, term, uh, different ways in which this can happen. One is called as row dependent termination and the other is called as the row independent termination. So let us first look at the row dependent. Now in the row dependent, nothing will happen except that a row protein, row protein will come and bind. Once it minute it binds to that site, it will tell, okay, now it is time to stop the transcription and the RNA comes out and everything separates out. The RNA polymerase goes its way, that RNA transcript comes out and the DNA forms the helix and it is over, transcription stops. This row factor is a hexamer made up of different subunits and it also has a ATPase activity and helicase activity. So this is known as termination using row factor. Now there is one more way in which termination can occur and this is, this is known as row independent, row independent termination. Now in this what happens is the DNA the, uh, and the RNA let me just tell you now that Termination signal is a stretch of around 30 to 40 nucleotides on the RNA transcript. So there is a termination signal and this consists of many GC molecules 
followed by a series of you, you, you will come. When so many yous are coming, this will be you, 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 you will be formed and a GC terminal will be formed and this will form a hairpin like structure, a hairpin loop is formed. When the hairpin loop is formed on the RNA transcript, this is, I am talking of an RNA transcript, now let this be the DNA. So on the DNA, there is a sequence rich in GC. When it is rich in GC, the RNA transcript will be formed and this will result in the formation of a hairpin followed by U. So what is uh, will happen is this has only two double bonds between A and U it is two double bonds. So this can separate out and plus this GC pairing will pull the transcript. The result is the transcript come out, comes out of the DNA. The DNA RNA hybrid releases. So it is a the in this, the sequence in the RNA is self-complementary. So, the sequence specificity of this nascent RNA transcript will form a particular stem loop structure to terminate the transcription. And these are called as hairpin structures because they are like a hairpin, they are bent. And this will result in row independent termination. Now, let us look at the transcription in eukaryotes. We finished the transcription in prokaryotes. What is the transcription in eukaryotes? What is the difference and what is the additional things that are happening in eukaryotes? So, again, certain general concepts. What is it? There are three types of RNA polymerases. Now, there are different proteins required for this. All these are called as transcription factors. Now the chromatin structure is altered to allow access to the DNA. They are, I'll talk about this in gene expression. Now you need to know what are called as structural genes and constitutive genes. Now constitutive genes are always expressed. The control of these gene expression is different from that of the structural genes. The expression of structural genes is however tightly regulated and there are many sites in the DNA and many mechanisms by which the structural gene uh, expression is controlled. Now I will deal again with the, all of this in regulation of gene expression. So let us look at the initiation. Let us first look at RNA polymerase 2 which is responsible for the synthesis of mRNA. The transcription initiation reads promoter and upstream regulatory regions. Whichever it is, whatever it is, whenever there is a DNA, it will require a promoter region. A promoter region plus there are many other cis acting elements which are present very much upstream. So these are called as upstream regulatory regions. Now the promoter region in eukaryotes is different from that in the prokaryotes where we saw it was mainly uh, TATA box and GAAC box. Now if you look at the promoter region in, in eukaryotes, Promoter region is at minus 25 base space and this is equivalent to that Pribno box that we saw in prokaryotes. So if this is the start of transcription, this promoter will be at minus 25, minus 25 base space upstream. And this is called as a Tata box or the Hognes box. In eukaryotes, it is called as a Tata box. Now there is a second consensus sequence. Just as the way you found uh, there were two consensus sequences required in prokaryotes, even in eukaryotes we need two consensus sequences. One is minus 25 and the other is at minus 70 to 80. At minus 70 to 80, uh, this box is known as the cat box, CA80 box. This is known as the cat box, Tata box and the cat box. Now let us look at the initiation. Now the, remember the constitutive genes which are not regulated, regulation is different, have a GC box and no Tata box. They have only the GC box. Since these sequences, whether it is the Tata box, CA, CAT box or GC box are on the same molecule of the DNA, they are called as the cis acting elements. Now, enhancers are special cis-acting DNA sequences that increase the rate of initiation of transcription by RNA polymerase 2. And this again I will deal with in regulation of gene exp expression. So, let us look further. 
the RNA polymerase does not bind directly to the start of initial uh, of transcription it requires the help of many proteins so transcription factors they are called as transcription factors so many proteins are required one by one they all will come this uh, so many proteins are necessary all the proteins different proteins different configuration they all will help in the binding of rna polymerase to the DNA. To bind the DNA, you need a different transcription factors. So, RNA polymerase does not bind directly. It associates with six transcription factors. Transcription factors 2A to 2H. These transcription factors are called as transacting elements. Why do we call it trans? If it is a product of different gene uh, remember these transcription factors are proteins so they have also been expressed by a gene present in a different chromosome so if it is present in a different chromosome and this protein comes and it helps the RNA polymerase to regulate this gene then you call it as transacting transacting elements now these transacting elements are the proteins that recognize and bind directly or indirectly cis acting elements and it regulates its activity either at the cis acting or at the directly at the site of transcription so let us look at the elongation the elongation is similar to that of prokaryotes but one thing is in prokaryotes transcription and translation can occur simultaneously as the rna transcript was coming out uh, rna poly uh, polymerases as the transcription uh, as the transcript was coming out ribosomes could have gone and bound to the transcription uh, the rna and started synthesizing the protein whereas in eukaryotes such a thing will not happen they because the rna is has to come to the cytosol and there is a clear cut nuclear membrane now eukaryotic termination, there is a termination sequence called as AATAA followed by GT repeats. The termination is closely related to the post transcriptional modification. Now in the now I'll talk about the post transcriptional modifications that can take place for this uh, RNA. Now the nascent RNA is known as the primary transcript. It needs to be modified to be, thing, uh, to be a functional tRNA, to be a functional mRNA or to be a functional rRNA. This modification is critical especially in the eukaryotic systems. So what are the modifications of HNRNA? What are the different modifications that can take place in HNRNA? Heterogeneous RNA or heteronuclear RNA. Now H HNRNA, the primary transcripts are called as HNRNA. They are larger than a mature mRNA by many folds. It is much larger. If you look at HNRNA, it will be very big. Whereas the mRNA may be very small. Comparatively, the length will be smaller. So what has happened in between from to convert HNRNA to mRNA? So they are, now what are the different modifications of HNRNA? And then we'll look at mRNA. So now the first modification includes capping at the 5' prime end. At the 5' prime end, one cap is going to be put. Which is that cap? It is 7-methyl-gonosyl. 7-methyl-gonosyl seven, seven cap at the 5' prime end. This is going to be the cap at this end, 5' prime end. That is a first post-transcriptional modification. Then at the tail, you are going, we are going to have a poly-A tail. This is called as poly-A tail, which is happening at the 3' prime end. At the 3' prime end. 5 prime 7 methyl cap, the cap will continue to be there and and then a poly A tail. Now one more important thing that is happening to this is the decrease in the length and this is happening because of splicing. So let us look at what is splicing. As I said capping at the 5 prime end is by 7 methyl gonosin triphosphate cap. The 5 prime structure, why is this cap there? What is the use of this cap? Now this 5 prime cap structure is found on HNRNA and mRNA both. So this shows that the capping is occurring in the nucleus. 
and not in the cytoplasm. The cap structure will be recognized by a cap binding protein and only then translation can take place and this capping occurs prior to splicing. Now the poly A tailing at the 3 prime end. Now in the DNA there was no poly DT. The DNA did not contain DT. The deoxys in multiple poly DT was not there. So that shows that the tailing process does not depend on the template. The tailing process also occurs prior to splicing and the tailing process also occurs in the nucleus. So these are all points of points that are needed to be known from an MCQ point of view. Now let us look at mRNA splicing. The structural genes are always composed of coding and non-coding regions that are alternatively separated. So anything will have a coding region and a non-coding region. Coding region, non-coding region are interspersed. So you have a coding region followed by a non-coding region. So there will be interspersed coding and non-coding region. So the mRNA will also contain like that. So what are exons and introns? Exons are the coding sequences that appear on split genes and on the primary transcripts and they will be expressed in the mature mRNA. Introns are the non-coding sequences that are transcripted into the primary mRNA and will be cleaved out in the later splicing process. So you have got exons and introns. Exons and introns. It could be in variety ways. What has to be done is the introns have to be removed and the exons have to be joined together. This process by which intervening sequences are removed are called is called as splicing. Now this is called as splicing. So what uh, and how is it done? Now in the nucleus or uh, later on there is something called as small nuclear RNA. What it does is there is a different mechanism. All these SNRNAs, SNRNA proteins, they all will come and bind to these intervening sequences and it will result in the formation of what is called as a lariat. When the lariat is formed because of SNRNA, this intron will be will come out and the exons will join and the exons will join. It is a because of SNRNA, small nuclear RNA are responsible for splicing. That is the take home message, small nuclear RNA are required for splicing. Introns are removed, exons are spliced together. mRNA editing is one more way by which uh, the whole RNA transcription is regulated. Now what is the basis for this is that uh, it is taking place at the transcription level itself just by certain base alterations. So one gene can be responsible for more than one protein. Now this is a classical thing that is seen in ApoB48 and ApoB100 synthesis. Now there is the same gene which codes for both B48 and B100, same gene but just because of the formation of one single change in the, in the nucleotide sequence at the 48th level only at, a, at that time by the time it reaches there is top codon is formed and it results in the formation of ApoB48 but if there is a that nucleotide is not there it will result in forming a bigger proton ApoB100 in the liver cells. So same gene can produce different proteins more than one protein and this is respond these gene sequences of after post transcriptional modification can there can be multi-purpose differentiation so that is the reason mrna editing can take place now what are the post -transcri transcriptional modifications of trna what are the post transcriptional modifications of trna and now removal of the leader sequence at the 5 prime end, removal of the intervening sequence in the anticodon arm by RNA P endonuclease and ligase, addition of CCA at the 3 prime end and certain base modifications also take place. The post transcriptional modifications of rRNA, uh, rRNA is always synthesized as a huge molecule known as 45S rRNA and this is a precursor of all the three rRNAs. Then the matured rRNA will be assembled into the ribosomal proteins 
to form ribosomes and then they are exported out into the cytosolic space. So let us conclude transcription by the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription. So if you look at the prokaryotes, there is a Pribno box at minus 10 and TA, TA, T box at minus 35. Whereas eukaryotes have a Hopkins box at minus 25 and the Tata box much upstream. Consensus sequence is at minus 35 TTGACA, whereas the consensus sequence is minus 70 to minus 80, the CAAT cat box. Now, the GC box is not there for prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, only the constitutive genes. Enhancers are not acting in prokaryotes. They are present in eukaryotes either upstream or downstream. They are usually present cis-acting elements present on the same gene. RNA polymerase is only one holoenzyme and the core enzyme which is without the sigma unit. In uh, eukaryotes there are three types 1, 2 and 3. Initiation factor is sigma. Here we need a number of transcription factors to start initiation. Prokaryotes or eukaryotes do not require primer. Termination can be row dependent or independent. Here in eukaryotes, it is a sequence dependent. Post transcriptional modification, yes, it does take place of rRNA in prokaryotes or in eukaryotes, tRNA also and mRNA. Only in prokaryotes, there is no post transcriptional modification of mRNA. In eukaryotes of all the three, there is post-transcriptional modification. So with this, we come to the end of transcription in eukaryotes and in prokaryotes. Thank you.